Which countries are facing the worst humanitarian crisis in the coming year? Somalia, Ethiopia, and Afghanistan now top the list, according to the International Rescue Committee's annual emergency watch list. Somalia and Ethiopia, because East Africa is facing the worst drought in decades. And Afghanistan, of course, because its economy has collapsed under Taliban rule since the U.S. withdrawal last August. Joining us now is David Miliband, President and CEO of the International Rescue Committee. So good to see you, David. So there's so many terrible places in the world. How do you reach this conclusion, the worst possible uh, you know, crises in the coming year, and, and how do they break this cycle? Thanks, Andrea, for having me on and for your interest in uh, this vital issue. There are 340 million people around the world in humanitarian need, and more than 90% of them are in the 20 countries on the International Rescue Committee's watch list. This is a unique data source. We use 67 different sources of data, plus the evidence from our 200 field sites around the world. And there are three drivers of the uh, watch list. One is conflict. Uh, that's the main driver of humanitarian needs. Second, the, cl the uh, climate crisis, which we see today. It's not our grandchildren's problem, it's today's problem. And then thirdly, the economic shockwaves that have gone around the world, especially since the war in Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine. Food price inflation, just to give you one example, is more than twice the level in these watch list countries as it is in the Western world. So we're talking 30 to 40 percent uh, food price rises. And obviously for people on the edge, it's an absolute disaster, especially at a time when the global aid system is so systematically underfunded. What do we do about it? We say three things are absolutely key. One is to break the cycle of crisis with the kind of announcements that were made yesterday by Samantha Power to support the uh, fight against famine in East Africa, in Somalia in particular. Uh, secondly, we say it's essential to protect civilians in conflict. Many of your viewers will be, might be surprised to know it's civilians who are more likely to die in conflict than soldiers. Ukraine epitomizes that. And then thirdly, that we have to recognize that there are global risks, not just the climate risk, but the pandemic risk and the economic shocks as well. Uh, it's not simple, it's not easy, but there are examples of how it can be done well. Now, the U.S.-Africa leaders, uh, the summit with 49 leaders continuing today here in Washington, they're focusing on trade, investment and in health, infrastructure, agribusiness. Could this make a difference? Do you think there will be a reality to back up these pledges? Well, I hope so. It's very, very important, this uh, summit, because there are two stories of Africa. One is of Africa rising and that it's trading more. It's got a growing middle class of over 350 million people. But the other side of the story is of significant number of African countries who are struggling. Uh, Somalia is an obvious example. Ethiopia with political and uh, conflict problems as well as the uh, drought. But I also want to mention countries like Mali, uh, like Chad in the Sahel, where malnutrition is right. And the truth is, if you live in a stable state that isn't at war, you're 20 times less likely to be in extreme poverty than if you're in a fragile or conflict state. And our aid system globally hasn't recognized this reality. We're saying that more than 50 percent of the global aid budget should be going to fragile and conflict states. At the moment, it's only about 25 percent. So there's a mismatch. And until we recognize the problems that start in countries like Somalia or Ethiopia or Mali or Chad, don't stay in Somalia and Ethiopia and Chad and Mali. They, they move because people move. We're not going to get to grips with this problem. And what about, I mean, you've talked about the effects of the war in Ukraine, obviously on the grain exports and on the inflation of food prices around the world, particularly in Africa. But what about Ukraine itself and the migration that has been caused, the refugee crisis there, and now the attacks on the power grid where people don't have power, they don't have water, they don't have heat. Um, are they moving up on the list or compared to Africa, well, do they, do they still have? Point. Yeah, it's a great point. And I, I'm glad you raised it. There are two things that are very, very important. First of all, the situation in Ukraine is very, very tough indeed, especially for elderly people. Uh, the temperature was minus five when I spoke to our team yesterday. We have teams across the country, especially in the east. We were able to get into Kharkiv within 36 hours of the military allowing civilians in there. And the situations are very, very grave. And obviously, if the attacks on the infrastructure become more successful from the Russians, then there's a danger of a refugee flow. But the second part of the reality 
is that the Ukraine crisis is being well funded in humanitarian terms and well supported in Europe for those refugees, women and kids who've gone into Europe and have been given rights of residency, rights to support. And so our argument is that we shouldn't reduce the amount of money that's going to Ukraine. What we should recognize is that the kind of humanitarian support going into Ukraine needs to be matched in other parts of the world. And so the fact that the Ukraine crisis is showing what the humanitarian community is capable of, the kind of solutions focus that we can bring to bear is very important, but we can't constrain it to Ukraine. One of the messages from the Africa summit that you mentioned from African leaders is, look, we don't want double standards. You can't treat Ukraine different from the treatment of Somalia and Ethiopia. That's certainly a very strong message of our watch list report. Such an important point. David Miliband, thank you. Thanks to the IRSC for all the great work you do around the world. We really appreciate Thanks. this.